Democrat power is absolute. I wanted to go into an article here on a judicial decision in California this week that I think is probably the most important legal ruling for 2024. But I wanted to talk a bit about the absolute power of the Democratic Party and what absolute power under all Democrat rule means. That's poop. You see a lot of this in San Bernardino now. You could say it's unrecognizable, but I guess that would kind of depend on if you're coming home to look around or if you've lived through the transition. Either way, my old hometown looks nothing like it did 30 years ago. San Bernardino, once a blue collar town with a solid middle class, has become the poorest and most dangerous city in California. I see a lot of the comments from people. They say, Nick, you spend a lot of time driving around showing everybody run down America. Where are you from? Why don't you pick on your hometown? We're talking about the Democratic Party. Why do I have a video up about Gina Carano, who was a star on The Mandalorian, seasons one and two? Why have this up about the power of the Democratic Party? Gina Carano was fired by Disney Corporation for the following tweet. Jews were beaten in the streets, not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children, because history is edited. Most people today don't realize that to get to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government f first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is this any different from hating someone for their political views? So Gina Carano was fired from a popular television show by Disney for this tweet. Lucasfilm stated that her social media posts denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable. So Carano didn't actually do what Disney claims she did. What was her crime? The agenda of Disney is to educate their audience into voting the correct way. This is why you have so much preachiness about uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion in all of your culture. The, the Democratic Party wants to control all of the culture. That doesn't matter to the executives that run Disney. All that matters is the absolute power of the Democratic Party whom they serve. I'll give you another example. Billionaire Elon Musk found out the hard way that you have to pay bribes and kickbacks to the Democratic Party if you want to stay in business. Before Elon Musk purchased Twitter, Twitter X, he was a beloved liberal leftist that no progressive had a problem with. The moment he stopped banning conservatives on Twitter X, he got into the crosshairs of the Biden administration. Biden says Elon Musk's relationships with foreign countries worthy of being looked at. Asked whether Elon Musk posed a threat to national security, President Biden said he needs to be investigated. And that's when all these investigations and, and judgments against Elon Musk kicked off. This is Dr. Boz. She had posted a video on peer-reviewed journal research. Each week I go live on YouTube. And this past week, I talked about a topic that got quite the interest. In fact, it's one of the highest and fastest growing live videos I've done in a while. But within 12 hours, YouTube took away the monetization, or they stopped advertisers from coming to my channel on that particular video. Well, the problem was she was citing a peer-reviewed journal. What was this doctor's crime? Her crime was not violating any policies about misinformation. Her crime was that she was blocking the absolute power of the Democratic Party. So this woman offended the powerful, and this woman offended the powerful. This is all leading up to this beautiful article cited by the Daily Wire. Judge says feds can't selectively prosecute right-wing rioters while ignoring Antifa. No individuals associated with the left, the judge ruled, who engaged in anti-far-right speech and violently suppressed the protected speech of Trump supporters were charged with a federal crime for their part in starting riots at political events. That is textbook viewpoint discrimination. A judge in California threw out charges against two far-right political agitators 
saying the federal government engaged in selective prosecution. Remember that phrase. This is the key legal ruling of 2024, in my opinion. By charging right-wing rioters, but not the far-left agitators they fought against, who did exactly the same thing. Robert Rondo and Robert Bowman attended a pro-Trump free speech rally in Berkeley, California on April 15, 2017. Antifa and related far-left groups decided they needed to shut this down. They came prepared for violence, bringing weapons including pepper spray, fireworks, knives, and homemade bombs. And they used those weapons, as well as their bodies, against Trump supporters and law enforcement. Judge Carney objected to the fact that federal prosecutors, meaning Biden's prosecutors, charged only right-wing participants, even though left-wing agitators performed identical conduct or worse at the same event, which prosecutors' own evidence acknowledged. Most telling in this case, the judge wrote, is the government's silence as to why it never pursued a case against a single member of Antifa or related far-left groups with respect to their violent conduct at pro-Trump events. Well, the answer to that is very simple. Antifa, with the purpose of at physically attacking anyone daring to show up at a Donald Trump rally, was carrying out the specific will of the Democratic Party. These are basically the red shirts that you would see in communist countries and communist revolutions, violently attacking anyone who stood in the way of the power of the Communist Party. Antifa, according to Biden's Justice Department, was doing their jobs, intimidating and silencing Trump voters and suppressing their political activities. Defendants have established selective prosecution. There is no doubt that the government did not prosecute similarly situated individuals. Antifa and related far-left groups attended the same Trump rallies as defendants, with the expressly stated intent of shutting down, through violence if necessary, protected political speech. At the same Trump rallies that formed the basis for defendants' prosecution, members of Antifa and related far-left groups, all associated with the Democratic Party, and operating with the full permission of the Democratic Party, by the way, engaged in organized violence to stifle protected speech. Of the 20 people arrested at the April 2017 Berkeley rally, the government charged only defendants and other members under the Anti-Riot Act. The government charged no members of Antifa or other far-left groups under the Anti-Riot Act for their use of violence to shut down the rally. This is key. When Democrat mobs violently attack non-Democrats, there is not a single Democrat prosecutor, judge, or official from the FBI or Department of Justice who thinks that's a bad thing. They work for the Democratic Party and the uncontested power of the Democratic Party. And that means Antifa doesn't even exist as far as they're concerned. To put it simply, these Democrat attack groups, which both appear to use violence to silence protected speech, are identical in material respects. The only difference is in their speech and beliefs, the judge wrote. By many accounts, members of Antifa and related far-left groups engage in worse conduct and, in fact, instigated much of the violence that broke out at these otherwise constitutionally protected rallies to silence the protected speech of the supporters of President Trump. That is constitutionally impermissible. It seems this judge actually read what's written on the front of the Supreme Court building. Equal justice under law. Something that has been ignored ever since Joe Biden took office in 2021. The government cannot prosecute members such as defendants while ignoring the violence of members of Antifa and related far-left groups because the Trump group engaged in what the government and many believe is more offensive speech. The judge's order included photographs of Antifa engaging in violence at the same protest for which the defendants were charged. Here it is, Antifa member pouring water on a disabled veteran at the Berkeley rally. Evidence showed that left-wing protesters had descended upon the pro-Trump rally to start a fight, and did so. One man punched a Trump supporter, threw him onto a park bench to continue the beating, and was in the process of striking him until law enforcement intervened. A young woman used pepper, pepper spray and hit Trump supporters, explaining that she felt like fighting a white bee today. Police detained one Antifa member who had an improvised explosive device. 
Defendants Rundell and Boma said that more than 10 Antifa agitators were pummeling a black man wearing a red hat, and they sought to protect him. Nick Hanna, the U.S. Attorney for the Central District of California, boasted that four local members of white supremacy groups faced federal charges in attacks at political rallies. Nick Hanna here is calling these men white supremacists. What were these white supremacists, in his words, doing? They came to the defense of a black man wearing a red MAGA hat who was being beaten by 10 cowardly Democrat Antifa agitators. So that's the new definition of white supremacy, coming to save a black man being attacked by Democrat mobs. The government charged the men, the Trump supporters, under a rarely used law, oh that sounds familiar, called the Anti-Riot Act. The law makes it a federal offense when interstate commerce or communication, including tele telephones, is used to plan what later becomes a riot. So these people who showed up to hear Donald Trump speak were themselves charged with interfering with communication. In 2019, the court dismissed the charges, finding that the Anti-Riot Act violated the First Amendment. But in March 2021, the appeals court overturned the ruling. Joe Biden comes into office, and his goons restart all the prosecutions. Because if you dare not let yourself be killed by Antifa, by Democrat violent mobs, you're the criminal. On February 21st this year, Carney again dismissed the charges based on their second argument of selective prosecution. Ronda was released from jail, but guess what? Biden's Department of Justice prosecutors immediately filed an emergency appeal to the Ninth Circuit. They're still going after these men for the crime of attending a Trump rally and defending themselves from Democrat Antifa mobs asking for Rundo to be arrested and held without bail, saying they thought he might flee through the southern border if he was not. On February 23rd, appeals judges wrote that defendant appellee Robert Rundo has been arrested and that lower courts were prohibited from releasing him as the government's appeal proceeds. So the law does not matter to Biden's Department of Justice. The law does not matter to Biden's prosecutors. All that matters is furthering the absolute power of the Democratic Party. So I think this is the most important legal ruling of 2024. And I believe that this political hearing and judicial ruling in California is hopefully the harbinger of a change in America for 2024. Because our country is lurching towards civil war. If there is no set of rules that govern the behavior of the absolute power of the Democratic Party, we don't have a country, and we don't have a constitutional republic. There should not be one set of laws for one political party, and no laws for the ruling political party. And that is what this election is all about. Thank you.